Welcome back. It is Radio Biafra and this is Hello Motherland. I welcome you if you are joining us right now. Of course, it is the time and I will cross over to one and only Chief uh, Chiwetalo Ago. Of course, I have him with me this evening to speak to Biafrans and of course to get to know him better, to get to know his, you know, understanding of what we are doing and his take on what is happening currently in our land let me see if i have him mazi good evening from here can you hear me good evening sir i can hear you all right good evening good evening so will it be fine if i address yeah. you as chief chiwatalago would that be fine uh, seven titles of chieftaincy at the moment. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. When we summarize all those chieftaincy titles, I think it will be fair enough to say Chief Chiwetalago. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, oh, you're oh, correct. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. I am very privileged and very honored to be talking to you this evening. I must tell you, I've been watching you while I was still a child. Can you believe that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's very possible. It is possible. It's very possible. It is. I think... Um, very, very possible. I think the first time I, I saw you on the screen was uh, Ikuku. I think during the movie called Ikuku. That, hey, that was many years ago. Very long time ago. <laughs> that was many years ago. Very really long time ago. <laughs> so... Uh, Peter Dutchie was involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, he played the Igwe. The that's correct that's correct yeah all right let's yeah, get you're welcome let's get straight into it first of all i would like you even though you don't need any introduction but i want you to tell our people because the whole world is listening it is not only an idea for yeah. land all over the world they are tuned in they want to hear from this great man a man who has been around i must tell you tell us briefly about yourself and if possible, how your career took off. Please go ahead. The career is going on wonderfully, according to the design by God. Because I am the biggest actor in the whole world, veteran actor, by virtue of number of movies I've done, since 1981 officially i have done a 2003 productions 2003 and the person taking second position has done just about 500 wow. look at 500 look at 2003 the difference is mightily clear the biggest veteran actor in the whole world the white actors of uh, Hollywood are not interested in acting for a long time. What is their interest is getting the big money in dollars and investing. Uh, but uh, here we don't earn big. Uh, we used to earn uh, 1.5 million per movie, but it's no longer there now because they are complaining of uh, marketing. You know, that marketing does not even get up to 1 million copies. But we are managing. We don't have any choice. We don't have to run anywhere. Here is for us forever. Uh, so I am leading African actors in terms of a number of production do done already. Uh, and the more jobs are coming for me because the difference between me and other actors is that my talent of comic relief. The, the writer gives me the script. Then I recreate the way it will be good for information education and then comic relief which is very important comic relief that you are laughing while i'm talking absolutely that is it so i'm the biggest actor by the grace of god in the whole world as of today unbelievable all right now now yes there, there is something also to it i want people to understand that this is a, a pure natural talent you know you know like you have in, what like you have in overseas people go to school go to university to learn acting but here is a man that i'm mm. talking to who his own i mean talent is raw direct from elohim Tell us about raw. this talent. Raw. Did you went to school for it, or it is something that you were born with? Please go ahead. I I traversed uh, a lot of circles in education, even to uh, former West Germany. Germany used to be one 
But after the end of the Second World War, uh, the global authority, global powers divided to divide Germany into West and East. So I had an uncle, younger brother of my father, who schooled in West Germany, then uh, tried and brought uh, some of some relations like me. So I schooled in Munchen College, uh, dramatic arts and everything theater. Then came to Nigeria around uh, 19, uh, in the very early ages to practice. Wow. Today, I have, uh, in fact, uh, at that early ages, I, uh, uh, I am my, those who are, who we are learning from, you know, we from the theater group called the Inspirers. He started functioning the time when Michael Jackson was hovering the whole world with his own talent of uh, singing and dancing. Uh, it was in 1982, Michael Jackson came out with uh, the trailer. The, the, the one called the trailer. And yes, that was yes, the time course. my theater, theater group started functioning. I had my members even till today. You know, so I, the, 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 the two uh, points uh, combining is raw talent and then uh, uh, the thing education can do for you. You know, awesome. uh, that's where I have an edge over every other actor we have in Africa if not the whole world. Uh, so this my record uh, is so intimidating that uh, almost every week uh, universities call me to give me one award or the other. The last award I got was from uh, got, uh, um, um, uh, this uh, university uh, in um, Uturu Okiwe, yes. Gregory University. That was the, the last award. That made it about uh, uh, eighty-five or six so, uh, of my awards. Oh, you know, so well. institutions, individuals, uh, they they give this award to me on a regular basis. So God has made me the highest. Yet I can't help to be humble because if you're humble, you relate with God very well. Pomposity is not in my life. Yes, uh, yes. Rubbing shoulder is not in my life. Otherwise, we can't make it uh, in, in serving God. In serving God. Uh, Absolutely. So, where I am today is um, interesting, is thrilling, is admirable. The whole world almost are in love with me. And I'm happy about it. Yeah. And uh, the way I relate with God has instilled strength. Uh, your audacity, the fears I've been taking away <clears throat> of my life and my eyes. I, there's nothing that can make me fear in the, the world of today. Even if Goliath comes now, I'll tell him, Goliath, look at this seat. Go and take your seat. <laughs> I'm not the person that can intimidate. So you can imagine that no army general in Nigeria, even if you're, you're, you have the highest uh, rank, you know, in the military, you can't come and talk to me anyhow. I would rather lecture you on uh, how you have misled Nigeria, misled the populace. Because uh, Buhari came in as, as an elected civilian uh, president. But what we are seeing now is militocracy, autocracy, intimidation, rough handling. The, the civilian atmosphere has been wiped away. We are now living at their mercy. Those who can will be afraid of them. But like I said, I am not afraid of any of them. In fact, the time I was arrested and I went for their interrogation, uh, the coordinator of uh, the generals tried to be... <laughs> Try to go education wise, but I, 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 I put him down. We started putting a, a literature, Julius Caesar, et to et to Brute. <laughs> it was <laughs> putting, I was putting. But I, I, I et to Brute, uh, when uh, Brutus uh, stabbed Julius Caesar Absolutely. from behind, Julius Caesar turned and saw it was his, 
closest friend, he, 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 he almost cried and said, it's too good. So even <laughs> you protest. Uh, we started quoting, but I saw I had a hand. <laughs> Ma Mazi, I must, I must confess, I must confess, talking, uh, talking about humility and humble. You know, uh, most of your movie I watched in my own time was, of course, uh, the ones you performed in Igbo language, okay? Then, there was this, yeah. there was this conclusion among people that, okay, he can only... So, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. I want to correct correct one thing, one mistake uh, people make all over the world. Yes. We are Igbos. We are not Igbos. Yes. We are Igbos. We are not Igbos. Igbo came about because at the end of the, at the end of the war it will started going back to places like Lagos when we are there we are wonderful people uh, you hear from small girls and boys of uh, Yoruba stock or Moibo or Moibo so is that corruption of the that uh, yes. permeated everywhere otherwise we are not Igbo people we are Igbo people Igbo. one day I will give you the story of a Yuri a re in Israel uh, that came here landed in uh, 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 Aguleri because if he was gathered today, the person you give cola is must be from Aguleri. Uh, Aguleri true. is one of the eldest uh, from a re family. Well, that one is a talk of another day. But I'm trying to correct uh, that absolutely. pronunciation. No, it's that, not, that is it's correct. Not Ibu. It's a corruption. It's no, a corruption it's of the word. It's, it's a corruption, corruption of the Lagos. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank okay, you very much. Yeah. So what I was saying okay. is um, people thought that uh, Mazichi Wetalago can only act on Igbo language movies. I even thought as much. As a matter of fact, when I was bringing you on, I asked Mazioke Foreign, does he want to speak Igbo or English? But look at it. You are mesmerizing me with the English word. <laughs> I never knew, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, I never, and yet, and yet, when you act your movies, you barely use the English word. You stick to the script, you skip to your dialect. And that is humility. Because somebody else would have said, well, I can speak English. Why not mix it up? A little bit of Igbo there, a little bit of English there. My goodness me. What's your take on that? Go ahead. I am in all. I'm in English, I have expertise. The uh, Igbo language is the same thing. Even a uh, culture tradition, I am in all, you know, then uh, combined <laughs> with the uh, humility. <laughs> what humility does for a human being is that it doesn't let you go off the reckoning of God. God does not play with pe people who are humble. You can, like just like you and your father, you can't get anything from your father unless you're humble. Absolutely. And if you are your ten children and you are the most humble, your father will always prefer to interact with you before any other child of his. Humility, humility is a is a is a mixer. Humility is an achiever. Even as two of us are talking, if you are not humble, I'm not humble. We cannot interact very well. Absolutely. Okay. Assuming you, you come with query instead of a question, humble question, I cannot answer you. You That's know, uh, and I would like to impart that knowledge to people that the more humble we are, the better for this society created by God. Any leader, whether you're called president or prime minister, that has no humility, you cannot impart it to the people you are ruling. And if they are stubborn as you're stubbornly, Society will inflame, would, would get flamed up. You know, uh, a, a leader who talks to his people with humility will always get support from them. Uh, but if you come and you, uh, you push people here, push people there, uh, there will be mistrust. Uh, 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 in fact, you call for gathering. People will say, who are we gathering for this man who is a pompous? who is not a, 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 a never having respect for his people. So there is need, whether we like it or not, to be humble. Because uh, there is God who is our creator, we can, it's only uh, humility we can use to interact with God. Not, uh, I, I know this one pass you, I'm taller Absolutely. than you, I'm bigger than you and all that. No, it's humility.
Thank you very much yeah. for thank you very much for that. If you are joining us right now, yeah. it is Radio Biafra Hello Motherland. Of course, I am interacting with a renowned elder, a Biafran elder for that matter. He is indeed a legend when you talk about Hall Nollywood and all the acting or whatever you have to say about it. He is a Biafran by heart. His name is Amazi Chief uh, Chiwetalo Ago and please, if you are listening in all platforms, if you're on Facebook I want you to share it, invite others, and of course, if you're listening via Radio Biafra app, you are welcome. All right, Mazi, let's get now into the real matter. We have gotten to know uh, my uh, Chief Chi Watalago, especially I myself. I thought I know you, but now I know you even better. Let's talk better. Biafra. <laughs> let's talk Biafra here, Mazi. Very, very important. What is Biafra to you? Uh, my association with Biafra started in 1968 or thereabout because after the fall of Enugu uh, to Nigerian soldiers, as refugees, we found our families in our area because Enugu had been evacuated. So, in that Olu area, I was 12 years cooking for Biafra wow. in Amibo Hospital, Olu. Uh, what was our remuneration? Uh, the back of yam. We will peel yam. Then they put a lot of flesh in the back. You know? So when we got home to refugee camps, we used finger to remove, to zip, to remove the back. Little flesh will remain. Uh, in fact, my mother had a baby boy we called at that time Biafran boy because it was the day Ujuku declared Biafra that he was born. Job. Job Ago. Wow. Job Ago. So we decided to be leaving that flesh uh, cut off from back of him for Job. Well, we could eat anything like a lizard. Uh, this is a frog that is soft. Uh, grasshopper. We were eating all that, leaving that flesh of yam for Job. So at twelve, I was working there for an Amibo hospital, and uh, God, God, God carried us through until the end of the war. I see it now. So Biafra is not a new thing uh, for me because I started working for them. Uh, we will be there. You see, the wounded soldiers uh, brought in the uh, emergency room. Uh, uh, we were not allowed to go to that area because that was meant for medical health experts. Uh, all we were doing was to cook for them, it's the wounded soldiers uh, and other health workers. Uh, so I am not a man of the effort for today. It started from around 1968. Uh, today I'm now working for the Afra in spirit. Because the problem in Nigeria that concerns we, uh, people from the South East, is that there is no equality, there is no equity. Everything shared at federal level is slanted to cheat the South East. And uh, I, well, I, I am people who think like me believe that it should not uh, continue. Uh, I'm into more prayer than activity, uh, 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 activism. Was a prayer like you know saved Israel from the hands of uh, the soldiers, uh, 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 Pharaoh's soldiers, uh, to the extent that when Moses left them, they hit the Red Sea, uh, they lost hope. But God came at that time and they divided the Red Sea. Israelites passed. All uh, Pharaoh's soldiers drowned. In the movie called uh, The Ten Commandments, this was run by the whites. You see the marvel of God. You see the mystery of God. You see, uh, I, the filmmaking making I am in is forever. I'm not coming out from filmmaking until I expire in this world in the lifespan God has given me. Ten Commandments, anybody who watches it, saw the love God had for the Israelites and saw the mystery of God because uh, how can you divide the Red Sea into two? It's beyond human understanding, but it, it happened. 
So that way God helped Israelites is the way he's going to help the Igbos, the people of the Southeast, if they sustain themselves in prayer. Uh, if you place God and place prayer, I prefer prayer to use to conquer the pharaohs. The pharaohs are the people like uh, Ruhari, you know, who hates uh, who hates equity, uh, justice, and fairness. Uh, that, that, that's why he said years ago, few years ago, that we are a dot. Because he looked at the map and saw just the, the space of Biafra and said, they are a dot. We were not there when God created the world and uh, gave us, he didn't even count what God gave us. Because God gave us the biggest intelligence in Africa, ingenuity. That's why we were able to create manufacture cars. Uh, let Dr. Ezekiel Izu manufacture the one he called the uh, uh, Z 600 and called Abacha to sponsor it. Abacha agreed. Uh, what what uh, Ezekiel Izuig wanted to do was to do mass production. And he told Abacha he was going to use up to 400 million naira. Today, what is 400 million naira? Nothing. If you look at the avalanche of uh, avalanche of vehicles bought by Abu Bakr Malami, Attorney General, it's, it's nothing. But he bought these cars, and, and I know from uh, fraudulent means, you know, because, sir, uh, cannot be watching the people go hungry and they buy all these avalanche of vehicles because they want to be a governor in your state. You know, uh, so God will always listen to us until until the Uru, until we get to the Afra. The Afra is nothing but mind that that is having your own region where if you want to manufacture a plane, sponsorship will be there. You will be encouraged. You wouldn't be stopped. You wouldn't be sabotaged. Because that's what is happening now. If I tell you the fight, innocent fought in order to get these vehicles on board, you wouldn't believe. Because all the imports of a uh, 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 motor pass business he was doing are the wolf. They were seizing the, the imports and, and selling them off and selling them. Uh, is it give away? Just give away. The present uh, co controller general Hamid Ali, Hamid Ali, he never allowed uh, uh, all his impulse about the vehicles to to scale through, you know. So he got to a point when Innocent said, "Let me go to court." He went to court. At high court, he defeated them. At uh, at state courts. He defeated them. At high court, at Supreme Court, he defeated them. And they went to kill uh, his, uh, I think, uh, his lawyer, uh, one of the best lawyers we have around. They went to, in fact, they made an attempt to kill him, but God was with him. And God meant innocent to come into being. That's why he was, uh, in, you know, saving lives that were meant to be wasted, you know. I, I, the the Yoruba uh, lawyer, a senior advocate, they employed. Uh, these, the, these names are there, you know, that fought against the coming of innocent vehicles. But today I landed in, in Abuja with morning flights. I saw the big bus of innocent being, being used to service the airport uh, business. Because in the airport, when you come out from your, pla your, uh, your plane, uh, airport authority provides the uh, vehicles that will carry passengers to, to uh, the arrival hall. Yes. You know, so if the impact by the average Igbo man is not hidden, it's known uh, by everybody. The thing is that if other Nigerians love Nigeria like we love, like Namdi Aziki, where the great Zik loved and fought for our independence, if they love Nigeria in the same vein, Eh? and encourage the Igbo man who has the ingenuity, then we will become uh, uh, um, um, El Dorado of Africa. You know, the, 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 some don't like the, the, the fact of 
You're going to follow the evil man and learn from him. Mazi, I, I need to let me let me come in. Let me come in. I need to ask you something there. You're talking about the yeah. love the Igbo man have for Nigeria. Now I want to ask you something. What dividend? What dividend has that love paid for an Igbo man and Biafra land? Has he paid any dividend, or are we giving, putting, putting, and what do we get back in return? I want to find out from you. What dividend? That, or don't that, you think? Uh, don't you think? One. Don't you think that is part of our problem that we love Nigeria too much, more than the people who claim to own Nigeria? Please go ahead. That was what uh, Dr. Nnamdi Azikiwe was accused of, that they loved Nigeria too much to fight for Nigeria's independence. Yet, when they, uh, when they came to the point of sharing booty, I call it sharing booty, uh, Tafawa uh, Balewa took the prime ministership. You know, they gave Zeke just ceremonial presidency. Ceremonial presidency have no power, no, no power in the real, real sense of analyzing power, you know. But he still managed because he didn't want Nigeria to scatter, you know. But everybody behind Zeke was seeing that as a as a, a misplaced priority, a foolish effort, and it eventually ended as the count that we were over loving Nigeria. But if you don't, you have to show that love first. So when they are accused, they won't have the ground to act to say you hate Nigeria. You know, and if anybody hates Nigeria, it is those who are profiting from it now financially. Because if you know the uh, amount of tea free, tea free of our oil well, you pity this country. It has collapsed. It is gone. But uh, those who we are th who who has thinking like the great Sikh used to think, you know, they are believing in it, but me, my own wish, and I wish Almighty God will back me up, my own wish is for us to break into regions, stay there, let's see what you can do from your region. Uh, lumping us together does not help the matter, because if you lump us together, uh, the suppression of, okay, for example, if you want to enter university, you know the cut-off mark. Uh, those in the north, they are given cheap cut-off marks, but those in the south, the whole of south, uh, they are given high mark to achieve before you can be given admission in university. You know, so if you look at the inequality in practice, that uh, the the ninety-eight percent of uh, employment by Asurok is of northerners whether qualified or not you know uh, 98 percent and the rest that small percentage remaining is shared among the rest yet those who are at the echelon of power inside us europe they are producing nothing as i'm giving you an innocent view from my heart absolutely you know they, 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 he who uh, pays the, the, the piper, the case the tune. Dictation is coming from the north when it should be from other sources. You know, if you're not, uh, like, for example, if you're not, uh, if you're not, um, I mean, uh, having this uh, high educational quality, you know, I don't know why they should place you on top of somebody who has. It's inequality, it's, it's unfairness, uh, it's, it's, it's lacking justice. But we cannot use force. We don't have to use force. Prayer and bringing God to you can defeat them. somebody who even has machine gun. You know, uh, we have to be patient with God until he gives us this uh, Biafra, because Biafra is important to us. Absolutely. Uh, what, is, what is happening today is appalling. People are asking, when will the, the tenure of Buhari come to an end? So other minds who have been uh, uh, given impute will now proliferate and then uh, meet, meet at places like a sort of to fashion out a new Nigeria. If a new Nigeria is not possible, then we can go to regions.
You know, I have my freedom to manufacture keke with air condition. And I don't have a blockade. It becomes a new atmosphere, new a new new uh, uh, new 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 environment. Ibo man has manufactured keke with air condition in Aba. Ibo man, one young engineer in uh, Ebony State, uh, manufactured solar powered uh, keke, waiting for the governor David David Romani to, to to sponsor for mass production. But it didn't take long. This is this didn't happen during the peak of a COVID, you know. But uh, what what is now taking the time of uh, Dave Romay is the presidency is targeting because of his relationship with uh, President Buhari, you know. So I don't know if it affected that idea of uh, mass producing KK with uh, solar power, you know. These are things we refer to. Man, so. All right. Ingenuity, ingenuity. All right, Mazi. Yeah. I want to I want to say something uh, here, and I want to get your view on it. Now, I don't know. Maybe we are forgetting one thing here that we fought a civil war, and now it, it is true that it was declared no victor, no vanquish. But in the minds of a that northerner, was, that, was a, that was a deceit. <laughs> exactly. That was a deceit. Exactly. The, in yeah. the minds of a northerner. We are slaves. We are defeated people. And that is what informs what is currently playing out in the political arena, in the economical arena. Now, my question is, how long are we going to continue to pray for Nigeria to be good, knowing that Nigeria does not belong to us? Wouldn't it be possible for us to start making a, you know, a, a head road like we are doing now, agitating for Biafra, to restore our own place, Nkanyi Bonkanyi, a place we can call home and develop at our own pace than trying to force ourselves to Nigeria. And after you've answered this thing, then I will go into this whole thing of Igbo presidency and where it's taking us now. Please go ahead and give me your perspective on what I've just alluded now with regards to the whole Victor Novanquish rubbish. Please go ahead. Uh, something you mentioned earlier, uh, that is, I don't believe that anybody should stop prayer in your life. Don't get tired. <clears throat> Some people were thinking along this line in Israel in those days. Uh, but uh, fighting is not alternative. Having uh, all the weapons of war is not the best alternative. If you're patient with God, it will make us like Israel of today. Israel of today was nowhere when they were in Egypt, even shortly after they came out. But today, that patience is paying Israel because uh, Israel is the chief supplier of drone to America. You can imagine small Israel manufacturing drone serving the purpose America wants, the purpose uh, uh, Britain wants, the Britain all world, the, the, the uh, all powers. When Israel is manufacturing the weapon they can't get elsewhere, serving their purpose. You know, so I pray, my prayer has no end. You can't expect me to wait a lot in my house to, to buy or manufacture a gun I can use to fight enemies like a, <clears throat> this is a present government. It's only prayer. If, if you, I want you to know what prayers can do. It was prayer that made David to defeat Goliath. It wasn't that catapult he fired on Goliath. The prayer that made God look his way and begin to answer his prayers. You know, and the, that patience, well, <clears throat> the good thing about it is that today, nobody can venture, nobody can try to come and anger Israel. No Arab country can bear Israel. Israel can, in their country, fish out a scientist of Arab uh, background and send missiles to get you in Arab country inside your bedroom. That's the thing people who are patient with God can achieve, can gain, you know. So God can give it to us. If he realizes that we are always beckoning him, knocking at his door, uh, not going elsewhere, not doing anything out of anger, 
He can give such things to us. Because I, I think I believe strongest that we will get Biafra. But the Biafra that has a springboard or basis of peace to rule, you know, but not Biafra who will say, let me go and fire a Sorok. No, 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 no. Those things won't, won't help us there. Uh, you know, All so right. let's continue prayer. Don't get tired praying. Of course. Don't get tired praying. No. No. Of course. Absolutely. All right. Now, let's talk Igbo presidency. There has been this whole noise about Igbo presidency. It's our turn. And the North has made it clear that they are not interested. What do you think our people should do instead of, you know, for me, I, I look at it as, you know, people making nuisance of themselves in the sense that everybody wants Igbo presidency. The whole governors in the name of Igbo presidency are compromising, allowing the soldiers to come in to kill our youth just to be on a good book with the caliphate. But now, as you can see, the whole Igbo presidency thing is becoming a sham. As a matter of fact, a fraud. What is your take on this whole issue of Igbo presidency? I want us to continue trying our best in the prayer I talked about. A time will come. See, God is a wonderful God. Though. Do you re recall an army general from the north who said over his dead body will Igbo get their prayer? At a, at a hero. He died in a plane crash. Is it not true? Absolutely. Your current absolutely. News. absolutely. He said over his dead body will Ibu, uh, Ibu, Ibu is get their fry. He flew the plane. He died with some people of his uh, like minds. Uh, did, did, you, did, did you destroy the plane? It was God. It was God to prove a point. That uh, I say, Onya Panama Guacano, the modern, the modern. So God did that one for us to show that He is still with us and He will continue to be with us. Uh, though it is good that we are seeing many people jostling for Igbo presidency, people of Igbo, Igbo extraction. He, he would, the opposite would have been disastrous and um, a pity that. Was, we would have wished for other tribes people to come and uh, walk, uh, fight, struggle for the presidency. The way they are meaning, I like it. It's interesting. It shows that we are not sleeping. You know, let's watch what God will do for us from prayers. It's not a physical thing. You know, uh, Peter B is there. Uh, 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 my friend from uh, Ebony, Pius uh, Anim, who was former Senate president, is there. Many others are there. As many as we are, the better for us. Uh, it, it's, uh, the, some people from outside our tribe, like some Northerners, are, get, are getting, uh, they are reducing. They are, they are seeing now that the woman is not sleeping. Now, whether they support us or they, they, they support somebody who is not uh, with us does not matter. What is interesting is that the Igbos are, are use the phrase, making the, the necessary noise. They didn't make that necessary noise. Keep the atmosphere charged to tell people that we are interested in it today or tomorrow or whenever. You know, uh, if, if, if they, uh, uh, some people in the not want to prove to us that we can't get it, that we don't deserve it, we leave all that one for God to decide. All right. Uh, but let them keep the temple. Thank you very much uh, for that, Mazi. Thank you very much. And of course, if you are joining me as we you. are almost trying to wrap up with this interview, I want you, of course, uh, to know that I'm speaking to our elder. Of course, he is a veteran, a legend in his own right. Chief Chiwatala uh, Ago, he is with me this evening. All right, we continue. Mazi, let Let's talk about Mazen Namdekano. I'm sure you are aware that he has been incarcerated, abducted, of course, from Kenya and radiated back to the Zuko, Nigeria. Of course, we know that uh, extraordinary rendition is a crime against humanity. He is currently facing charges that are trumped up, charges that cannot be substantiated before Abuja High Court. What is your take on Mazen Namdekano? Please go ahead. I've told the world about three times in interviews that uh, the room I was put when I was detained, 
uh, was a ground floor while Nandi was on top of me. Nandi was on in the room on top of my own room. I told the world and they know. You know, so the incarceration is nothing but uh, inhumanity to man, inhumanity to, to our tribe. Uh, you know, Buhari cannot say, look at what Nandi did him or did against him. Because uh, wh how did we begin to hear about Nandi? Because uh, Buhari felt to do his security work. When a husband were coming to the east, entering our farms, seizing farms, raping our mamas, taking ransom, and uh, people like him now, they could not continue watching. So he went into action. And when he went into action, it was in a Nibo, a libel. He didn't go to north. He didn't go to Yoruba land. He didn't go outside the southeast. He just went to save these people. Uh, who are uh, being treated like slaves. That was the only uh, uh, crime he committed against Buhari. So the question today is, Buhari, why are you still holding in Namde? His father died, his mother died in the course of Nigerian soldier invasion of Afara homeland of Namde. The two were lost. Look at such a sacrifice. Yet he didn't say, I surrender. Okay, I follow you now since I couldn't uh, uh, wrestle with you. The two, the two human beings, we are lost. Yet now they are still struggling. I am still struggling. You are still struggling. Buhari, uh, when, when, which day will you temper justice with mercy? What did this, is this man taking your position in Asura? Is he acquiring... Uh, firepower that is bigger than you, the Nigerian government. It's not. It's a simple human being, a humane human being who came out to save his people against the uh, machinations of uh, those of you in power. Amen. So release him. Let him come out from there. You want to treat him like they treated uh, Nelson Mandela, keep, keeping him everlasting in detention? The next five years, you must have taken away everything about uh, the, the Jews, the good ingredients about uh, Nambekano. This is the time to get him out there, let him go and face his today and his future. Because you, the government, you've taken away everything very important uh, in humanity. So keeping him longer is a placing you in a judgment where God will hit you hit your background, hit your generations. Bring him out now. If you are if you're if you're a human. If, if, if you do if you if, if you have ever tested anything like justice, like fairness. I hate the fact that he's there. Look at because of him we have we created uh, see that home of this. Uh, so you are happy that even the economy is is of South is being affected because of, this is a weekly sit at home. The sit at home done by the Igbos is just meant to show sympathy with our brother that we can continue to enjoy a don while he's kept there in frustration, in captivity. You understand? All right. So we do what we can do, but uh, the, the ones we cannot do, we hand over to God. All right. Before I let you go, yeah. I need to ask you uh, maybe one or more two questions. Tell me the insecurity in Biafra land, the insecurity in the southeast. What is your take on that? And what do you think that is the recipe for disaster that informs the slaughtering, the killing of our youth at might by the Nigerian military? What is your view regarding the insecurity in the southeast as well as in Biafra land? Please go ahead. Why I'm not worried so much about uh, what is happening in the south is in terms of that. Is that God is at work. <laughs> God is at work. Amen. This thing continued to a point that, that, that continued to a point that some people got worried. But if you look at what has happened in the north, in the north so far, you know that we have a fair God, a God who knows what is justice, uh, because uh, things started happen in the north. That uh, even a train carrying passengers were, bo were, were bombed. By who? Not South Eastern 
But by northern bandits, northern bandits who are who have now picked up arms against uh, the presidency, you know. So uh, it's like saying, "In a chum chukuna chuge." That's what is happening today. In a chum chukuna chuge, and the bloodshed in the north by their own people, by their own people. Bandits who, who, how they are uh, 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 get access to these weapons, you and I may not know, but they are out against their north, their own north, not not our east. They are, they they don't want to leave the scene. This is you know where this is started. This bandit uh, problem in the north, they were brought in to cause chaos if uh, Jonathan was allowed to continue after the election. So the other side had to bring people who will scatter everybody if Jonathan tried to stay. Those people were, were being owed at a point because it was at a price that they were brought from Northern African countries. You know, now they refused to go and entered and captured their fans because they were being owed. You know, those in the central bank knew when money was given to them and when the full payment was not implemented. Lack of paying fully is the reason why we are still seeing them today. And you, you know, it's, it's, it's backlash, it's boomerang, that they refused to go because uh, the, 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 those who, authorities who brought them did not finish payment. What happened to that balance of payment? You know, God has his ways of doing things. So God is not happy with the authorities who brought this crisis and who cannot cure the crisis now. More things are expected to happen in the north because everybody has lost control. You know, I'm praying that this remaining small period for the presidency is done peacefully so that another person who is coming there can be somebody sent by God. Not from those who believe that uh, they allow the uh, 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 student children will be converted to slavery or whatever, just like that. Uh, if you can manage Nigeria United, leave every tribe to go. Every tribe is big enough to form more than a, na a nation. European countries are not even as big as South East, or South West, and so on and so forth. Uh, so allow us to go and go yourself. Take care of yourself. Uh, leave us to take care of ourselves. You can take care of ourselves. Like I said, Igbos are so ingenious that they can feed themselves the next 1,000 years. You know, uh, I mentioned things uh, manufactured by Igbos uh, so far. Uh, they, uh, if you go to university, the Nandazikiwe University and other Southeastern universities, to see young boys of 22, 23, 24 manufacturing things uh, complex as uh, aeroplane. All they need to do is support from, from government tentacles to even uh, make these planes uh, uh, put in uh, commercial uh, ventures. We can sell planes to small countries around us and get foreign exchange, different foreign exchange from there. But that space has to be there. The space that is not there is what we are going to pray for. Let's have such space, you know, so we can feed Nigeria, even scientifically. Uh, I, I, am, I am a contributor uh, to, the, to the big name we have in Igbo land. Nollywood is about, um, uh, if you look at the stories and the movies, they are about uh, the life we be in not only South East, but Nigeria as a whole. Uh, I was the person who conducted audition for living in bondage on behalf of the wow. owner of that company, uh, 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 Kenneth in uh, uh, Ken, Ken, is a company that uh, started at Ijesha. Uh, then uh, so much money came, the man, Kenneth in now went to Okota, bought a source of land, built Many things. At the time, generator, generator uh, one million naira 
uh, was there. In fact, the, the kind of generator he used the gains from living bondage and bought uh, can be costing about a hundred, up to one billion naira today. Wow. Uh, but he was able to buy it because he made so much money from living bondage. So from there, the name of the Igbo man has refused to that. In, in fact, it's growing bigger and bigger because Nollywood is not only about Africa; it's about the whole world. Yet it was the creation of the, the average Igbo man, I inclusive. Like I told you, I conducted the audition that brought all these people on behalf of the man. How they did discover me? Because I was doing one NTA drama where I was infusing Igbo language in my act. He said, this man who is infusing, infusing in Igbo language must know about a lot about Igbo <laughs> people. And I gathered them. And today, see, Yoruba was there in film before us. The we came and overran everybody. Now our children are eating from it, our employers of labor from it, uh, even uh, manufacturing small, small cameras. We are wonderful. It, uh, we are God's making. And we will continue to be God's making. We can feed ourselves as against those who depend on oil. The north depends on oil. Everybody depends on oil. Niger Delta, oil. But we can do, Igbos can do without oil. Igbos can invite, create and manufacture. They are very ingenious. Absolutely. I still recall that we at the, at the, at the, at the, at the war, we manufactured our own oil from pancanel oil that we used to drive whatever vehicle. We are independent by nature, you know, but other tribes are still depending on this one oil, 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 oil. Leave us to go. Leave us to go. Leave us to in our southeast to do what God wants us to do. To feed us, to feed our nation, to feed, feed everybody. We went to Ghana to export the advent of uh, Nollywood. Ghana became something else. We went to Kenya. We went to many African countries to create all this. Nobody helped us from abroad. But the average uh, white man will, will naturally be afraid of us because if we begin to manufacture everything that can be ingenious to us, then the ex, they will men stop coming to uh, import into this country what they are manufacturing. You know that one is one fear by some foreigners. But what will be will be. God has taken us to where it. He, he will continue to take us until the whole world will see us. As made by God directly. Mazi, Israel, I talked about. Yes. Eh? Go ahead. Finish up. Finish up, and then I want to say something. Yes. Finish up. Go ahead. Uh, Israel, Israel, that is now so independent that they can feed the world powers. We can replicate such a thing. We can. We are powerful people by ingenuity, by our nature, by the support of God. Let me end it here. Yes, Mazi, thank you very much. You see, when you are talking about the ingenuity of an evil man, you know, the bless that God has given to an evil man, I, I remembered while I was in Onicha, um, I went to learn trade, Iba boy, you know. So, um, okay. Kenneth Okonkwo, Kenneth Okonkwo just finished a uh, university of uh, Soka, and he came, to, he came to our house, he came to our house to work for my boss. We lived in Norifte Street, MCC. So when he lived there, he was okay. so he was so miserable. You know, a young man who came out from the university, and he said to my boss, yeah. "I want to go to Lagos." And we were asking Kenneth, "What are you going to do in Lagos?" He said he wants to go and art movie. <laughs> the next thing we know, Kenneth left our home. Kenneth went to Lagos. Before you know it, living in bondage was born. That is how Kenneth started. We lived in the same house in Onicha before he went to Lagos. So amazing, the kind of blessing God has given to us as a people. Mm, he met me. He met me in Lagos when we were working for NTA. Now, when Chief Kenneth Nigwe, the owner of uh, Neck Video Links, called me to help him out, Kenneth Okonkwo, I had met in a uh, Ripple Circles. Uh, uh, let me know his address. So when I was calling people for audition, I now went to where he was squatting. He was squatting under his elder brother, 
number 49 M of this street, Uludia Papa. Hmm. That's where I went to invite him to come for audition of a living bondage. Okay, okay. I fetched him from uh, Mafoluku, Oshodi, to come and join in the audition of living bondage. Obegali Mwolobe, there are many. So these are routes God took us through to bring forth what we're enjoying today. You can see Netflix at a point got interested in Hollywood. World international filmmakers got interested in, no, in Hollywood, our creation. Oh, you see it now. God's hand is in all these things and will not continue until we reach the sky. Absolutely. And even the sky. Absolutely. That's the truth. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And of course, if you are listening, you. anywhere you are listening, Thank any you. part of the world, this is uh, Chief Chiwetalo Ago. And of course, before I let him go, uh, yeah. I feel like keeping him here the whole night. But of course, he's a busy man. He's got things to do. Tell me, Mazi, about the rising sun before I let you go. The rising sun. Rising what what sun. is it about the rising sun that scares away our enemies? Please go ahead. The rising sun is now about the creation of God. Look at the way it happened. I finished this uh, movie in Asaba. Then drove, I was driving to Enugu, but I don't nature. I, I branched to drop somebody. People gathered. He was gathered at a top, a top worker. I saw hunger on their faces. So I decided to come down my vehicle, started buying bread. I didn't know when I bought bread what 10,000 naira. When these, uh, I don't want to castigate them. When these soldiers came about. Uh, from fillers, I started hearing later. Somebody in APC who had a lot of squabbles to settle with the uh, PDP, thought that people gathering behind me were people who were going to vote for PDP <laughs> when the, the time came. <laughs> so he sent these uh, soldiers. They came. He, he, saw, he, saw, he saw the God that I had in me on that particular day and that moment. That I didn't, I didn't, uh, why should I run for ordinary soldier, soldier, soldier? You're unfortunate in our system because you're not educated, yet you are ruling us. It's rule, rule, not leadership. You know, they came and said, enter their vehicle. I said, what is my offense? Tell me the area of the constitution I had violated for you to say, enter your car. I'm not going anywhere. So I, when they wanted to use force, I used, uh, I forced myself to sit on the on the on the upper worker room. Uh, but wisdom told because I, I started hearing gunshots. My wisdom told me, since you have no skeleton in your cupboard, just follow them. I followed them. Then at uh, Army Barracks, I met some Army generals who thought I was uh, too much for their handling. Then they brought a warm jeep, black jeep. They took me to Enugu, uh, the 82 Division headquarters. They took me there. Even what to tell their organs was difficult. So it took them time to bring me out from the vehicle. They took me upstairs, organized a panel to ask me questions. The panel came, three army generals. I brought a camera, brought my separate seats, and brought seats for themselves. The questions began, you know, but each one I answered, and the intelligence I applied there uh, frightened them. Uh, they, they saw the thing as a difficult truth. But uh, my, my uh, knowledge of uh, arts and literature, uh, I was quoting, met the, the chief investigator to try to put with me. I quoted uh, Julius Caesar. He was trying to quote Julius Caesar. <laughs> I pitied him. But at the end of the day, they gave me a wonderful air conditioned room. And brought an army general woman to cook for me. <laughs> but they have seen in me a future leader that where they were placing me was misgiven. They brought the finest in their kitchen. I, they say I was treated like a general, you know. <laughs> so in the by by night, the whole community, Nigeria and abroad, uh, got got shaken. You know, even uh, their own colleagues were asking them, why this man? What, what has this man done to you people? You know, so in the morning, they prepared a, a, a presidential exit for me. 
you know, uh, uh, the rest is history now because uh, you people were given the the, the the showcase of what happened eventually. Absolutely. But what the statement I will make is that nobody will intimidate you if you don't get intimidated. Yes. The, in Nigeria, we are the brainest. We are the most educated. Dr. Omnan Daziki, we of Great Africa, is when he came from abroad, he established this uh, West African parallel chains of a uh, newspaper, and lectures began. He began to enlighten them. So here we are today. We are still the greatest in Africa. Nobody can challenge us. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, the, 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 advoc the advocacy for me is that don't leave your prayer. Yeah, I've, don't I've, leave I've, your I've prayer. Le I've if that, you leave I've your prayer, God today. will leave you. I've learned that today. Yes, Listen, yeah. Before I let you go, yeah. I want to I want to uh, pick your brain to see how much you can remember. <laughs> I know you've acted so, so many, many movies that you've lost counting. But I want to see... 2,000... Uh, no, no, no. See, see, eh? <laughs> yes. I can never lose count of number of movies. Uh, everything I've said in movie, I can never lose count of okay. them. Okay. I told you, yeah. as we are beginning, that I have done 2,003 productions while my colleagues are around 500. All right. I let's, can't forget. Let, let's put it to test. I want to ask you something. In which movie did you say, Igwe uh Jebegonga? -huh. Igwe Jenga was taboo. <laughs> Igwe Jenga, nobody knew him. Because he couldn't be in, in... No, no, hold on. Hold Igwe on. Jenga was taboo. Oprobos. Oprobos. Do, do, do I recapture Igwe Jenga? Remember. That was taboo. Remember, there's a place, uh, Bob Manuel Udoku. You guys were in the House Bob of the Manuel King. Bob Manuel was one of the lawyers. Yes. Oh. He was one of the lawyers for, for Adenze. All right. Bob Manuel All right. and uh, Kenneth Okonko, they were lawyers in the same university with Adenze. All right. So Igwe said, my daughter, don't marry this man. He's oh. Osu. All right. You know, that All was right. taboo. All right. All Me, right. I can't forget. All right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> all right. Okay, okay. Uh, even me, even me that is, even me that is asking, I'm beginning to suspect myself whether I still remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Thank all right. You before much. before you Thank go, you. I want your final word, uh -huh. your parting shot to our people. What do you have to tell Biafran youth, especially Biafran youth, because let, they are the let ones. Let them continue to be. Let's go ahead. In their hearts. In their hearts. Let them continue to be patriotic to Biafra. Biafra is a good thing. Biafra is a threshold you can use to enter Uhuru, to enter heaven on earth. Let them continue to be set fast. Let them no go negative, evil, and so on and so forth. Yeah. 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 All right. That is beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. I really appreciate. And I'm still going to bring you on to tell me about Eri, the arrival of the Igbo uh -huh, Israel Eri. extraction. We are yeah. going to have a date on that one because I would like you to educate Wait us on that. I would love that. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And of course, that was Chief Chiwetelo Ago. My goodness me. I mean, this is a part of him that I don't know about. I must tell you, I must confess. I don't know he can speak English so good because growing up i've been watching him of course acting in all those local and indigenous movies that is what i know of course he has started even before i started watching him but i never knew that the man is also educated and well endowed and well intellectual and of course this is biafra this is the kind of product we produce as biafrans we are determined and we are resilient, and we are willing to make means out of any given opportunity. As I was telling you, Kenneth Okonkwo, of course, of the living in bondage, we live together in the same place in Onicha. When I was uh, doing Boy Boy, he finished in University of Nsoka, and he came and joined us where we lived in Woliwo. I think it's Woliwo. That's MCC. That's what they call it. That's where we live together. From there, he went to Lagos, and the rest is history. And this is how our people are making it all over the world. But of course, if we don't get Biafra, all those industrialization, all those industriousness, all those Ibambo will not amount to anything. And we may 
not have anything left for our children to enjoy or to remember us for. So restoring Biafra, of course, will be the way to go. Thank you, Mazi. Chief Chiwatalago, you have spoken novels. And of course, Biafrans, welcome that. And Biafrans, appreciate you this evening. My name is Mazi Kechukwonoha. Unfortunately or fortunately, this is where we are going to leave it. I must tell you because our time is up. And next time I will bring him back. He wants to tell us about the arrival of Eri. And that is important for us to hear that out. But of course, for now, we are going to say a goodbye. But of course, not goodbye indeed because we will be back. It is instead of goodbye, it means see you later. From me, from here, it is God bless Biafra. God bless Mazen Namdekano. And God bless all the people of goodwill and lovers of freedom.